Welcome to Chess Dog, I'm John. Today we have a game from the St. Louis Blitz played in the year 2022. This was part of a Rapid and Blitz tournament that took place after the big Sinkfield Cup that Alareza Ferrugia won. That was a classical time control. This is Blitz, uh, five minutes for each side, I think two second delay uh, for both players. White is Jeffrey Zhang, uh, and he actually grew up in the same club I played in in Dallas now a 2,700 feet a player. I think he was 2,690 in this particular game. And his opponent is Alareza Ferrugia, who's rated 2,778. Let's jump right in and watch what happens in this quite interesting game with a bit of a twist ending. Jeffrey Zhang plays d4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, bishop to f4, traditional London system. He hasn't committed the knight or the pawn yet, so he could play a Jobaba London system. He's not going to, but he could. C5, E3, knight to C6, all very uh, traditional. Knight B to D2. Again, he keeps delaying the uh, the C pawn. Bishop to G4, and now C3. So basically, we have our London system, which is, I mean, White's just playing a semi-slav reversed, but getting the bishop outside of the pawn chain first. You got that extra tempo, you use it. E6, queen to B3, immediately attacking Alarez's B7 pawn. Uh, queen to b6 could be played here, but instead he plays queen to c8. Uh, c7 is controlled by the bishop, so he can't go there. So he goes to c8, h3, uh, kicks out Alarez's bishop, and also creates a little, little hole for white's bishop to go to if uh, black attacks it. Bishop h5, g4, bishop g6, and knight to h4. Jeffrey Zhang is immediately going after the two-bishop advantage. The knight is threatening to take the bishop at g6. There's not much black can do about it. Bishop to e7, knight takes g6, h takes g6. So white has gotten the two bishops, but in exchange for the moment, black does have this half-open h-file, and that gives his rook some activity. Bishop to e2, queen to d7. Now a knight can no longer come in and hit that queen. He moves it to d7. Now king to f1, with the idea of going to g2. Uh, white cannot castle here because rook takes h3. That was one of the advantages for black of opening that h file. So king to f1. And uh, this king is a little vulnerable. This, you know, the pawns are advanced, so it's not quite as secure. So Alareza says, well, I'm going to open up the center, maybe create a little danger for that king. So pawn takes, pawn takes. And the next issue is, well, white has the two bishops. So Alareza says, I'm going to trade one of those off. Bishop to d6, immediately going after uh, that extra bishop. Uh, Jeffrey Zhang says, no, thank you. Uh, if he does take, then after this, and then rook b2, black is much better uh, in this position. Uh, so bishop to e3, but Alareza says, I insist, and plays queen to c7. Now the queen backs up the bishop going to f4, and there's not much white can do to stop the exchange of dark squared bishops now. King g2, bishop to f4. Bishops are forced off. Bishop f4, queen f4. So Alareza's queen on f4 is really well placed. Uh, hovering around white's king, and for the moment gaining a tempo against the knight on d2. Uh, Jeffrey Zhang does not immediately move that knight. He first plays queen takes b7. So he's threatening the rook, as well as the knight on c6. So Ferrugia just goes ahead and castles. Uh, knight to f3 is played, and rook f to c8 to defend that c6 knight. And now, looking at this position, Ferrugia with black has got to find some way to get at Jeffrey Zhang's king. There's, it's just too open. You've got the queen here. He's got to find a way to get through to that king. Let's see how he does it. Queen to a6. The idea is to bring the queen back to d3 and aid in the defense of the king's side. Rook a to b8, ta attacking b2, defending b2. Now knight to e4. Threatening to open up lines against white's king with a move like f5 immediately attacking this g4 pawn. It's advanced, so you want to open up those lines. You do that with pawn breaks. So Alareza threatens f5. I hear rook h to d1 was played, but uh, queen to d3 immediately, bringing the queen over for defense, was probably safer. Uh, rook to c7 is played, and f5 immediately was probably more to the point. Um, rook to c7, queen to d3 now. And here, if f5, then just queen to e3, um, that pushes the queen away. And white's doing okay now in this position. So instead, a g5 uh, was played. And here, uh, again, queen to e3 is the best move. And after takes, takes, it's equal. You can't retreat the queen because knight takes pawn. So 
Queen to e3 was the safer move. What Jeffrey does, he plays queen to c2, and I first saw this move, wasn't sure what he was doing, but I think the idea is to play bishop to d3 and put as much pressure on this e4 knight as he possibly can. Uh, knight goes to e7, that idea is g6, h4. Check, this is a weak square, so he's rerouting the knight to that weak square that is around white's king. Bishop to d3, again, building up pressure on the e4 knight. Now knight to g6, that's really an exclamation point move. It's a great move. If white takes the knight on e4, then pawn takes, and it hits this knight on g1, then it would have to move, and then knight to h4 check, and black would just be winning. He'd have far too much pressure on white's position here. So Jeffrey Zhang plays rook to e1, really piling up on this knight. He's got three attackers on that knight. So now f5. This is very strong in this position. Uh, not only does it defend the knight, but it directly attacks the g4 pawn to open up lines against white's king. And if, in this position, Jeffrey Zhang, Zhang tried to trade queens with queen to c1, he'd get crushed with, crushed with knight to h4 check. If white takes that knight, then just queen f2 check, king h1, knight to g3 is mate. What if he tries to avoid exchanging and moves the king, say, to f1, then knight to g3 check. Brilliant move. Pawn takes queen f3, king g1. Queen g2 mate. So uh, trading queens is no longer on the table for white, and he has to take on f5, and the position around his king is opening up. g4. Perugia doesn't worry about that pawn or the knight. He just wants to open lines against that king. He's building up an extraordinary attack. Bishop takes knight. Pawn takes knight with check, and king to h1. Now, here at this moment, Perugia has a great attacking move available to him. That move is queen to h4. And the idea is this. Bishop takes f3, queen h3 check, king g1, then knight f4. And what does he do with this bishop that is being attacked? Um, if he plays the rook to e3 here, then rook to f7, and the idea is rook f5, rook g5. He's not going after the pawn. He wants that square. Rook f5, rook g5. And the threats are really unstoppable. If pawn takes rook f5, Bishop takes pawn, let's say, rook g5, check. You block with the rook, but then you take. Queen takes, and the bishop's under attack, so it would have to come back and block the check. Knight h3, check. Uh, if king f1, just rook to f8. Uh, if king h1, knight f2, check. King g1, knight to g4. And the simple idea is uh, rook to f8, followed by queen h2, mate, if queen to e2, rook f8. And uh, that would be it. The game would be over, basically, after queen to h4. But in this position, a rarity, he makes an imprecise move, a move that uh, most people would make, I think, and he actually takes the bishop. And here, black has one move to survive, but it's a pretty easy move to find because it's a basic capture, capturing the knight on g6. And after queen to f5, attacking the pawn at h3, back and forth, and in this position, they agreed to a draw. I mean, it's a repetition. Uh, if Ferugia had tried to, say, take the pawn and keep playing after rook to g1, the tables would begin to turn. So a brilliantly executed attack by Ferugia. Unfortunately, he missed that one precise move at the end. We didn't quite get the result we wanted, but it was a brilliantly executed attack, an executed attack up to that point. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.